Hello everyone, this is Ian Orvis with Tech Defense, and today on Tech Tip episode 25, we're going to take a look at PE frame for static malware analysis. Alright, so uh, the past you know month or so, we've, we've really hit malware analysis high and hard, and uh, we're going to continue doing so today, where we take a look at uh, PE frame, which is a static analysis uh, for PE files only uh, framework. So while we've looked at Mastiff, uh, which you know will determine a file type and then based on the file type, run all the tools associated with it, uh, you know this one focuses strictly on uh, portable portable executable files or you know what we uh, know as EXEs or DLLs, those type of files. Um, so uh, by default, this application um, will uh, you you can run an, an auto analysis. Uh, which will you know, pull you know, a summary of all these different sections you see below, or you can have these sections individually, which I'll show you all of them in a moment. It is created by, let's see if I can find, ah, down here, uh, at G-U-E-L-F-O-Web uh, at Twitter and uh, on email as well. And here is his blog. I'm um, pretty sure he's Italian. Let's see. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Italian. And uh, he has this tool as part of the uh, Kane distro, which we haven't taken a look at before, but this is a uh, digital forensics, forensics distro uh, created um, by, I believe, it's the security side team. So, anyways, uh, here's where you can get it. PE frame. So, uh, Google code that Google slash p PE frame is where you can get it. And uh, the download is is pretty standard here. Grab the zip file, extract it, and uh, throw it in opt or wherever you want to. Uh, your only dependencies, uh, I believe, are uh, just Python 2.7. Um, I don't think there's anything else crazy, although I had most of the malware analysis tools already installed on this box, so I might have missed that. So let me know if you run into any problems there. All right, but anyways, let's get right into it. So if I do a quick help on, you can see the options on PDF, you can see the options that we have. So uh, this is the uses usage format, right? So you're going to you know, invoke the Python script, give it what option you want to use, and then give it a file name. So I already have a ton of malware on this box, so we're, we're just going to use one of those that I picked up earlier and uh, walk you through each of these features. So first I'm going to show you the auto feature, which is probably going to cover what most people want to see anyways. So let's do Python um, tag auto and we'll go slash opt malware and uh, let's go with I believe there's one yeah so let's go with this guy and of course uh, you actually have to type <laughs> the name of the Python script in there okay there you go okay so as you can see it's uh, going to give you a pretty good summary of what's going on here. So let's walk you through what we're getting. So first, it's going to give us the file name. In this case, the file name is the hash because I, I pulled it down with Maltrieve. Uh, give you the size of the file, the date it was compiled. Um, so DOL, uh, I'm not sure if this is pulling the suspicious DOL uh, option or not because there's obviously DOLs in here. Um, it's going to tell you how many sections are in it, so you know your dot text, text, your dot data. It's going to give you the hash and the SHA-1 hash. Um, none, I'm not sure what option that's pulling in, but we'll see as we go through each option uh, one by one. The anti-debug feature, uh, so it's going to check if there's any uh, DOLs or API calls you know, specific to um, anti-debugging stuff. And the same thing for anti-VM. So in this case, we're lucky we found one that has some anti-debugging uh, added to it. 
Then it's going to you know comb through uh, the strings to determine if there is any files or URLs. In this case, you know, it determined these are the files involved. Well, not necessarily files, but these are the URLs involved. Um, and these are some of the URLs it pulled out of strings. So obviously in this malware there is a certificate included. Then it's going to call out some suspicious, suspicious uh, API functions, uh, ones that we normally associate with doing some, some bad stuff. Right? So create a file, create a thread, um, you know, all stuff that we associate with being necessarily uh, suspicious, not necessarily bad, but suspicious. Right? And then it's going to call out, um, hey, amongst all these, these ones right here are usually indicative of a malware that is trying to do some anti-debugging. So, for instance, um, if you see the key here is debugger present. So, if I try to you know fire this up with Ollie debugger and that triggered you know this is is debugger present key, then the malware behaves differently than it normally would, uh, perhaps not launching at all, and uh, so it's just anti-forensics techniques. So this is trying to help you identify those anti-forensics techniques. Uh, I'll tell you that any of the sections themselves, the uh, data, text, our source, um, sections are sus suspicious, and then it'll get into why later on. Uh, in this case, there weren't any. And then it's going to pull some metadata from the file. So this is what the file's real name, or this is what the, the file internal name was the version of the file, um, and then it'll give you a company name, and so on and so forth. Sometimes this will include uh, a location as well. Uh, but that covers you know, the, the auto portion of it. So it's say if we wanted uh, you know, just to get you know, uh, the info portion you know, by itself. We can go ahead and run info by itself, and just get the file name, the file size, and sections, and so on. Um, we just wanted the hash. We can do that as well, and we'll just pull out the hash. Um, I can't run this against multiple files at once, but just like we did in Mastiff, we can, uh, you know, write a quick Python script that'll do that for us. Um, ah, so that was what the nun was. So next one here, we're going to do the PAID. So I was going to run PID against the file and, and tell you the information based on uh, you know, what PID did, uh, ID uh, pulled. Now because that's just bringing in none, perhaps that was a dependency that I didn't uh, configure properly within the, the script itself. So I'll check that out afterwards and let you know. Um, and then, you know, it's the anti-VM, the anti-debugging, so we can we know anti-VM didn't have anything but the anti-debug did, so let's see, you know, calling that out on its own. Nope, it's just dbg. Like that. Yep, so uh, I was just telling you, yep, it, it's determined that there are some anti-debugging features. Um, so let's get into things that uh, you know, weren't pulled in that summary, but we can still pull out here. So say you wanted just to dump just everything you could, all the raw data for this particular uh, sample. You just do attack dump, and it's going to give you that. Now obviously, because of the size of this, you're not going to want to you know, print it all the screen. You'll probably want to output it someplace. So out.dump or whatever. But in this case, I'm just going to have it print all the screen. So you can see everything is, is showing you. Here. Oh, went too far. So, yeah. You can see what's going on here. And it's just giving you all the raw data so you can uh, you know, do with it what you will. Um, in addition to that, if you want to pull out you know, uh, strings like we normally would, you could... Strings the file, and that's going to give you, uh, you know, this, all, all the uh, strings, and then that gives us some clues to what the malware is doing. Now, luckily, 
uh, PE frame itself is already um, doing some analysis against these to pull out the URLs and what it thinks are files, you know, based on some regex uh, searches. So that's what strings would show us in this case. Uh, if you just wanted to pull out the URLs and file names, you could do so, like such, which you know that already showed us to us in the auto, so we don't really need to do that. Um, also, you can do a hex dump too. So you get the straight hex to you know put in the hex editor of your choosing. Of course, again with this one, you'll probably want to you know. Um, Type it out to a file instead of uh, instead of viewing it in a console like this. And uh, last but not least, you can pull you can pull uh, the entry points for the imports, for the exports, for the resource. Um, you know, just by using the particular options for that. So you can see the entry points for you know each of those um, sections. So you know that covers you know what PE frame is able to do for us. Uh, again this is uh, you know like Mastiff it's not going to give you the full picture. Um, you, you really need to you know combine your basic static with your basic dynamic malware analysis and then get into the advanced stuff where you're you know, looking at it with a disassembler or a debugger. But it gives you a good entry point. For instance, with this one, we learned that there are some uh, debugging evasion techniques being used, so we have to find our way around those if we were going to use a debugger on it. Um, see if I could pull in something with some better URLs or file names. Let's try a different sample real quick. Let's see what we got. Um, let's go with, I think I remember this one being decent. Ah, so there you go. So you can see it could pull some, you know, actual URLs out of this sample as well. And some actual file names that might be, uh, present or something you want to look for when you're, you know, setting up your process monitoring or whatever. But, you know, that about covers what I wanted to do today with PE frame. Uh, like always, you can contact me via the normal methods if you have any uh, requests for uh, me to review a particular tool or technique. Um, like always, you can hit me up via my uh, email, which I'll print off on screen here. Uh, you can hit see more videos and articles and stuff over at techdefense.com. And uh, you know, YouTube, Security Tube, uh, Twitter is at techdefense. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and I hope you like the show. All right, so uh, I told you the PEID stuff. I uh, wasn't sure what was going on there because it should have been showing me something, uh, you know, if it detects a packer or not. Um, and uh, what the problem was is I just hadn't given myself the appropriate permissions. So uh, until I do so, just to quickly show you using sudo with the PEID option. Here you go. So it'll list the packer if it detects one. Um, yeah. All right. Thank you.